31, we've arrived at our last example in section 4.2. So like with all of these examples, I want us to think about what is the variable or what are, I should say, what are the variables? We'll, we'll typically have two. Right, what is X? What is Y? If we're using those letters, um, was I given a slope? Was I given ordered pairs? One of each? All right, these are all great questions to just continually ask yourself as you're going through this. So let's see what we have here. In 2003, a town's population was 1,431. By 2007, the population had grown to 2,134. Assume the population is changing linearly. All right, so there's my clue. If it's changing linear, linearly, I want to find y equaling mx plus b. So what is changing? Well, it says right here it's a population. And I also notice that the year is changing. Right? I went from 2003 to 2007. And then the population also changed from 1431 to 2134. Now, I see my, my years changing, so time, or the year, is going to be my x variable. So in this case, I'm going to let x equal the year. All right, and then y will be the population. Now, I want to talk about using a base year here, because you see this, this is 2003, 2007, those are big numbers. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to use a base year. I'm going to elect to use 2000. All right, so I'm going to set a base year of 2000 going in on this problem. You don't have to do this. You don't have to pick a base year. And even if you pick, pick a base year, it doesn't have to be 2000. You could pick 1900. You could pick 2003 itself. You could pick 2010. I don't think that would be a great idea since it's past these years. And you'd start having to use negative numbers. I'm just going to opt for 2000. Okay. So with all of that, I heard two ordered pairs in here. I heard 2003, 1431, and I heard 2007, 2134. But keep in mind, if my base year is 2000, numerically, 2003 would turn into year three, and I heard 1431. And then in year seven, I heard, uh, what was it, sorry, 2134. All right. So I heard my two ordered pairs. I didn't hear a slope. I didn't hear that the population is increasing by this much per year. Okay, fine. I was given two ordered pairs and no slope. But I want you to see that before I've even read any of this stuff, right, I can unpack these three sentences and get my two ordered pairs, set my base here, figure out my x and y, and then let's see what they're asking. This says, how much did the population grow between the years 2007 and 2003. Well, the answer part A, I just want to find the change in the population. So if I look at the change in the population, which I could call delta population, if you wanted to be fancy. All right, this usually means change in. All right, but I'm not going to be that fancy. I just wanted you to see that notation. Like I said, it's a Saturday night. I'm feeling good with notation. All right, but we have the change in population. Well, it looks like it ended at 2134 and it started at 1431, so my change is 703 people. Right? The units on this are people. We're talking about a town's population. How long did it take the population to grow from 1431 people to 2134 people? Well, that represents the change in my time. You could either do 2007 minus 2003, or you could do seven minus three. I'll use the larger numbers this time out, just because. But ultimately you get four, and that would be four years. So over the course of four years, the population increased by 703 people. What is the average population growth per year? So I see the per, and I see the average. This is a rate of change, right? Rate of change. Uh, specifically, it's an average rate of change. They're asking me for the slope. All right, so if I wanted to find my slope, I would use my slope formula. So I would say m was equal to, here we go, the rate of change would be 2134 minus 1431 
over my years of 7 minus 3. So this would be 703 in ratio to 4. And if I think about the units, that's people to year. Let's see what that is as a unit ratio. That's about 175.75. So this represents 175.75 people per year. And this is just the first time in our class that we've gotten a slope that wasn't a whole number. Most slopes are not whole numbers. Again, this change represents an average change over the four years. It doesn't mean that each year the town increased by 175.75 people. Maybe one year it was 200, maybe one year it was 162, 185, 167, something to that effect. But they averaged out to about 175.75 people per year. And you, you can't actually increase by 0.75 people in a year. And it's fine. Numerical averages, they frequently are, are numbers that are not actually possible. It's just the numerical average. Okay, find an equation for the population P of the town T years after 2000. Oh, that's kind of lucky. I, I actually forgot that I was supposed to set my base year to 2000. And we're going to use P and T. So I'm not going to use X and Y. I need to be careful with that. All right, now I'm going to do my work as if it were just point slope form using Y's and X's. And then I'm going to convert my answer at the end to make sure I'm, I'm paying attention to the letters they're giving me. All right, so here we go. I have my two points and I have a slope. And I could use either of these two points. And you know me, I'm going to use the one with the smaller numbers. So if I go with my slope intercept form, right, we know y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So in this case, we will have y minus 1431 equaling 175.75 times x minus 3. And that's almost out of sight, so I'm going to move this up just so we can have some more room to work. All right. So let's, let's start doing this. We'll have y minus 1431 equaling 175.75x minus, all right, let's see what this, I'll just multiply that by 3. It looks like minus 527.25. And then if I add the 1431 over, we'll have 175.75x. Um, it'll wind up being a plus because that number in absolute value is smaller than that one. Okay, so we will do 1431 minus this answer, and that will be 903.75. And again, I don't want to finish off here. I, I want to make sure I answer the question asked of me, and it said use P and T for the letters, not X and Y. So ultimately, my function is P of T equals 175.75T plus 903.75. This is my linear model. Okay? All right. Let's see what part E is saying. It says, what was the population in the year 2000? Well, 2000... All right, it's, it's a time value, it's not a population value. So I'm gonna plug that in to, for T, but you, you need to be careful. You don't wanna plug 2000 in right here because T is years after 2000. So in 2000, that is quite literally zero years after 2000. So for part E, I actually wanna find P of zero. And that's gonna be 175.75 times zero plus 903. 0.75. All right, so in this case it's just 903.75 and we have to think about the units, right? This is people. So I'm predicting or I'm trying to figure out the population in 2000. I think it was pretty close to 903.75. I'm going to just put an approximate. It was probably closer to 904 people, but this is what it's actually predicting. There's obviously some kind of little um, numerical error, and I'm not faulting the model. Welcome to stats when we start to model things, they get really messy. But you can't have 0.75 people 
in a town, just like we couldn't grow by 0.75 persons per year. It had to be a whole number. But numerically, things get a little wonky when you start working with real world data. All right, the last part says use your equation, all right, to predict the population of the town in the year 2014. Well, again, 2014, it's a time value, but you want to be careful here. Don't plug 2014 in. In 2014, that was 14 years after 2000. So I actually want to plug in 14. Now I'm going to scoot this up just a little bit more so that I have some more room. So for part F, actually I'll put F right here. I'll put it below. We want P of 14. Well, that's going to be 175.75 times 14 plus 903.75. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to do 175.75 times 14 plus 903.75. So we would have about 3,364.25 people. Right? Or if I wanted to just approximate it, my best guess would be that in 2014, we'd have 3,364 people, okay? So there I am constructing linear models and we're doing this by hand, all right? I wasn't using a whole bunch of data values. We were only using two ordered pairs or maybe an ordered pair and a slope. But once we got our linear model, we could start predicting with it, all right? In these two examples, I gave you an X value, asked you for a Y value. Sometimes I'll give you a Y value and ask you for an X value. Really just depends on the problem. All right, so with that, we're done with section 4.2. And in 4.2, again, all we were doing was building linear models from verbal descriptions. When we get into 4.3, we're going to build linear models from data. And it's gonna be all statistics. So the next lesson is very stats heavy. If you've taken a stats class before and done some form of linear regression, it'll seem familiar to you. And if you haven't, well, then we're about to learn. All right, gang, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in a bit, bye.